Hey, welcome to Go Midwest Fishing. Thanks for watching. I'm in the middle of a camper restoration project, and today's project is to uh, check the wheel bearings on this camper with electric brakes. Now, this is uh, part of a longer video I have with a complete restoration of this camper, but uh, I'm going to make this as a separate video also, just so it's a nice short one in case you just want to see about uh, how to change the wheel bearings on a camper. Alright, today's project is checking the wheel bearings. Now, I got it jacked up already, so you can spin the wheel. And you kind of listen to see if there's any uh, odd sounds in there, and it sounds pretty good. But it is a, it's a good 10, 12 years old, and I doubt anyone's ever checked the wheel bearings or did anything with them. So I'm going to pull it apart and see what they look like. If uh, they look good, I'll just re-grease them. If not, we'll put in some new bearings. So, first thing is just take off the tire. Alright, now that the tire's off, we need to get this hub off. In order to do that, we need to get to the castle nut behind this cap here. So, this one looks like it's been dented, so we might have to replace that cap. We'll see. To get this off, you can Sometimes just tap a little or get a little screwdriver in there, it gets that flange. There it is. Spin it a little bit, keep whacking at it. Come. There, yeah, and you can see it does have a little little gouge in the top right there but there's no hole so I guess we could reuse it alright this castle nut here is held on by this cotter pin so we have to take that off before we can undo the nut now an easier way to take these off is I use the needle nose where you can get in the little round circle at the end of the pin and then you can hit it with your hammer. There it is. That one was a little extra stubborn. I got new pins, so I'm going to throw this one away. And if I didn't mention, always have plenty of paper towels and rubber gloves, because you're going to get greasy. Now well, this castle nut should just be hand tight. That one's a little stuck on there, so we'll just loosen it up. Oh boy, somebody really... Oh yeah, that was on there way too tight. It should have free play so this can move. Yeah, that wasn't good. However, somebody must have had this apart and didn't put it back together right. All right just spin that off. all the grease off it. I got a clean paper towel down on the floor here to put all my good parts. All right now the difference with a normal trailer and one with electric brakes is this hub here. Should come right off. First there's a, there's a washer in here you don't want to forget. That's gonna have to go back on so don't lose this. Let's make sure the nut doesn't rub against the, the bearing there and then your bearings are in there too so pop that up quick. All right, there's our front oh, here's our front bearing right there. Seems to be in good shape. Um, this hub here uh, is part of your whole brake system. So sometimes you can just replace the entire hub wear, but in this case you'd have to replace this whole drum brake with it. And your bearings are inside of there, so we'll have to pound the back ones out. And then this here is your spindle, just make sure you clean it off and look for any, any marks on it. Shouldn't be any gouges or scratches or anything. Alright, to get this back bearing out, there's a grease seal on here which has to be pried out. It can be kind of stubborn sometimes. Yeah. 
And a good way is just put a dent in each side. Kind of loosens it up. Let's see if we can't get, get a hammer in there or something like this and pull on it. There we go. That's all it is, just a metal ring with a rubber seal on it. That's just garbage. And then your rear bearings come right out. They're all greased up, so you got to clean those off. See, there's the inside of the hub, just a bunch of grease. Um, you also have the races, which are the rings that the bearings ride on. So you clean these out and look right here and make sure there's no scratches, gouges, anything in those too. Because if you're going to change bearings, you can change out the races, but these races are kind of a real pain to get out. So if you don't have to change them, all the better. Looks like mine are good, so we're just going to grease up the bearings and put them back in once I clean all this grease out of here. All right, for cleaning all the grease off the uh, bearings and hub and all that, I use uh, some brake cleaner. Works really good. Cleans it up real quick. Also works good on the bearing parts, just shoot some in there and scrub it down. This stuff shoots out really quick so you can use up a can in no time, so have a few cans standing by. You can roll around the bearing, check all the little rollers in there, make sure everything is rolling fine and there's no broken parts in it. I always like to finish up a little air blasting to get all the any little particles out of there, any leftover uh, brake fluid, uh, brake cleaner. Especially on these bearings where you don't want any uh, brake parts cleaner in there. So. Alright, now it's time to pack our bearings with grease. What I do is I put a big blob of grease in my hand, take the bearing in the other hand, and then just kind of shove it in. That's a nice packed bearing right there. And now I'm going to put the uh, rear bearing in. I'm going to grease a little in here first. There you go. Set the bearing in. Next, you just replace your bearing seal. How about these new? Um, anytime you uh, do your bearings, you want to make sure you get a new seal for the back because you're going to most likely destroy the old one getting it out. And um, they come in a few different sizes. So, what I do is I always take the old one to the store and match it up because you see them on the shelf like this and they're very close in size. And you, unless you know the exact size that it is, it's, it's hard to tell unless you match it up. So, that's what I do. Set it in there and what you want to do here is you want to hit it nice and even so it goes down straight so it works good as like a block of wood or something like this right over the top and just give it a whack. And just feel around the edge, make sure it's all nice and flush. Need one more little whack here. Yeah, that looks good. And before I put it on, I'm going to put just a little more grease in there. All 
Alright, it's ready to slide on the spindle, and before I put it on the spindle though, I'm going to put some grease on the spindle, and then we'll slide it on. Just put a little grease on there. One nice feature about this spindle, which I don't always see, is there's a grease fitting right on the end here, so um, when you just want to grease the bearings every year, you just stick it on there and it, it actually shoots out uh, in the back here, so it greases the back bearings. You can always just pull the front ones off, grease it, but to get the back ones, that's a nice little feature there. Now we're just going to slide on this hub assembly. Nice. And like I said, the only difference between this and the regular trailer is you got this whole brake drum here, so just make sure that goes over your brakes. Grease here. Okay, next we're going to slide on the front bearings. Alright, and uh, these are at a slant, so you want to make sure that it kind of points the small end of the bearings go in first. And then, here's the part that a lot of people forget is this washer we took off. That goes on next. And then the castle nut. So I'm going to get this castle nut hand tight and just give it a little twist with the pliers make sure it is tight and then we're going to back it off. So back it off just a slight turn just so you can get to the next uh, hole there where the cotter pin goes through. And when you buy those seal kits it comes with a new pin so that makes it nice. Gotta find where it goes through right here. And then just you know spin it to make sure it spins freely. That you don't have it too tight, or it won't spin. If it's too loose, you'll get a lot of play in there. So uh, hand tight, back it off like one notch so you can get this pin in there. Alright, went in nicely. You do have a grease cap that goes on here, so you gotta make sure this pin is folded out of the way enough so that cap will go on without interfering it. Before I close it up, I'm just gonna give it a few more shots of grease. Looks like that's full. On the cap. Off any excess grease there. Everything's good, spins good. Alright, next you just throw the tire back on. Alright, project's done. That's all there is to it. Pretty simple, as long as there's no damage. Uh, once you get into removing those races and stuff from inside those hubs, it can uh, give you some trouble. So, But if, if everything's working good, just put some more grease in there, put it back together, and it's a real quick job. So thanks for watching. Hope that was helpful. And if you want more information, just go to uh, GoMidwestFishing.com, and I'll have a blog post on it up there soon.